basically, back in the days when people thought that the Earth was flat, and the church thought so, and everybody else did too, and the idea of it being round was f first floated, then a lot of people thought that people on the opposite side of, of the Earth, the antipode of the Earth, would have to be walking on their heads, wouldn't they? And that makes perfect sense, right? Intuitive. Um, it took people a long time to realize that, you know, gravity works in these, this mysterious way, and etc. But the thing is that now we do actually have a lot of people who uh, walk on their heads. Uh, because the economic paradigm that we're all following is, is really kind of an upside-down version of what humans have been doing through their three million years worth of evolution. And so we, we're living through a very short evolutionary episode, if you will, um, where we're all just basically walking around on, on our heads. The, um, the strategy really leads to collapse. It, it doesn't really lead to anything else. There are no other possible outcomes um, it's really a, a fundamentally flawed idea. Um, it can only work for a short period of time when you can expand the use of natural resources. And once that no longer works, it works for an even shorter period of time while it is still possible to endlessly expand debt. But that runs its course rather quickly and, again, leads to collapse. So. Since that's what's going on now, what we need to do is flip ourselves right side up again and become like humans have been for the past three million years. And then we stand a chance. And if we don't do that, then we do not stand a chance. So that's what I will try to explain. So this is how humans tend to relate to each other. This is the, the normal relationship pyramid, if you will. Um, sort of like the food pyramid. Imagine at the bottom you have your basic starches and above that you have your vegetables and uh, at the very top you have bacon or, or what have you. <laughs> so if, if you eat nothing but bacon, then I think you die. I'm not sure. I think you die of pellagra or some nasty disease like that. Uh, it's kind of a form of starvation. So you don't want to do that. Um, but this is how people normally relate to each other. Uh, most of their relationships are normally close relationships with their family members, members of their clan. Most of us are, well, all of us actually, are physiologically evolved to have about a dozen people who are close to us. And then maybe a hundred people who are acquaintances, allies, strangers we know and maybe trust a little bit. And then beyond that is the universe of people we really don't care about, no matter what we say to ourselves. So um, this is what's programmed into us over you know, three million years worth of evolution. And, and although people pay lip service to there being billions and billions of people in the world alive today, that's like billions and billions of stars in our galaxy. We can't get there. They're, they're not us. They're not our family. They're not our acquaintances. We don't know them. So this is really how people relate to each other. And if they don't, then strange things happen. So this is how normally over many, many years people have done business together, if you will. At the very bottom, the foundation of, uh, of our food or whatever hierarchy, food is pretty important, of course, uh, but this, is, this includes everything, food, shelter, everything else that we need to survive. Mostly we rely on gifts, especially when we're very small or newborn or just growing up. Basically, uh, everything that people give us is a gift and we aren't um, expected to reciprocate until we at, le at least learn to walk and talk and maybe do some chores and other things. The reciprocation is in the future, so we accumulate gifts during our first 15 years of life, maybe 20, um, maybe 25 if there's grad school involved. And then, <laughs> and then we're expected to recom recompense, compensate for everything we've been given as a gift later on. So tribute and barter is sort of a, a layer above that, which um, involves people that we um, that aren't really in a gift relationship with us. So uh, there we expect the compensation to be more immediate and, and the terms to be 
to some extent negotiated but not necessarily involved the operation of anything we could call a free market. It, it's really still personal relationships. It's not, um, it's not some kind of a, a public scheme. And at the very top of it we have trade which um, generally has always been reserved for various key items, uh, luxury goods, uh, weapons, um, uh, symbols that, uh, that convey social status, not necessities of daily life. There were no convenience stores a few thousand years ago where you could go and buy a Twinkie. That is a new invention. So here, here's basically, just to, to recap and define better what I just said, trade is, is really, it involves goods and services exchanged specifically for monetary units, abstract units of, of value, which um, generally involve forming a monopoly. Money is a monopoly wherever it exists. Um, it presupposes the existence of a market where there are market prices that are somehow established through a large number of transactions and averaged across them. And social status is based on one's possession of these abstract monetary units. So um, everybody's plugged into a monopolistic system that issues and controls the distribution of money and who they are depends on how many of these abstract units they manage to accumulate through trade. Tribute is very different. Um, it, it involves contributions and donations and these can be based on all sorts of things, allegiance, uh, religion, tradition, charity. And social status is not based on how much money you have but how much money you can, uh, you can give away to, to support some local institution or tradition. And this has existed for a long time. Some, some forms of tribute are basically an effort to make peace. So instead of waging war, you actually make payments. Uh, that is a very typical scheme. Somebody conquers you and then you decide that being reconquered endlessly is a bad idea. So you just pay your conquerors not to conquer you again. And that for a lot of nations has turned out to be a very successful scheme. Um, barter is People think that barter is just an extension of a free market, but really it's a different kind of system where you take into account somebody else's needs on, on some level. So if you're, if you're trading onions for potatoes, you, you take into account what the need for onions and potatoes is very locally involving the people that you're doing this with as opposed to uh, in some abstract market that exists outside your, your local community or scope. And gift is again very different because a gift presupposes reciprocity on some level. You don't give gifts expecting to never get anything back. That is automatically a disqualification for a gift. Um, and uh, social status is based on how generous one is, on one's generosity. Now generosity is one of those amazing, very highly evolved cultural universals, human cultural universals. Every society understands what generosity means. And it's something that involves a balance, which is an amazing thing. If you think of a virtue that involves a the, the, the notion of a balance as, as a core principle, this is one of the few. Uh, I can't think of any other examples, really, because you can't be overly generous. That's, that's bad. You can't be not generous enough. Um, that's also bad. You, you're really looking at somebody else's personal needs and it also it involves understanding somebody else and establishing a, a gift-based relationship. So gifts are really rather amazing in the scheme that, that we have. Now, some of my perspective on this comes from um, growing up in the USSR, which never had much of a market economy. Um, and and uh, goods were not so much sold as distributed and usually when when something <coughs> appeared for sale, let's say bananas, uh, the news would uh, spread through the, uh, through the neighborhood like wildfire and people would, would queue up to, to snap, all, all, snap up all of the bananas that were made available. And the term that was used for when something appeared for sale is something got thrown out. So there, you're there to not, to, not so much to buy it as to pick it up. And, and whether you had money to pay for it or not was kind of beside the point because if you didn't have money then somebody might give you some because it wasn't about money, it was about access. And buying and selling for profit or reselling things was generally called speculation. So it was actually 
quite reasonable to get three times as, as many bananas as, as you needed and then uh, sell off two-thirds of those bananas provided you charged exactly the same for them. But if you started marking them up, they will haul you off to jail for profiteering. Profiteering was illegal. So, as a result of that, there was widespread reliance on personal favors because nobody really benefited from selling you the extra bananas. They were just doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. And then you were expected to compensate for that by giving them other forms of benefits and personal favors. Now, if you tried to pay for a favor, that would be a horrible insult. You could, you could be, get beat up for doing that. And, and status was not really based on possession, but on access to things, which, because it was all based on favors, was quite tricky. So, there were also a lot of elements of gift economy, uh, where people would try to give gifts to each other in order to get something in return. Um, uh, as an example, my, uh, my father was a professor and some of the graduate students upon arrival would, would, would uh, lavish presents on him, bottles of cognac, and one, um, one student came up with a, a, a whole set of uh, uh, silver cutlery, which was rather extreme. My father turned that down because how the hell do you compensate for that? He figured if, if that was the, the starting present, then the compensation would involve writing the guy's dissertation, which is a little too much to ask. <laughs> so, so that was declined. Um, true story. But the general expectation is that, you know, family members will help each other out because if a family member refuses to help you out, then that family member loses honor within society. So if somebody turns you down, and that's a relative, and that relative is well off and you're not, then that relative may continue to be, in some sense, well off, but he's not well off socially. People will stop saying hello to him, uh, will not want to be seen with him in public. So, in any case, this was a, a doomed system just like this one. I'm not trying to say, oh yeah, we should go, go back to the Soviet way of doing things, because you know, in some ways it sucked, but, um, and it fell apart. But I'm just saying that this is a, a, an example of a much more humane way of doing things uh, that had retained some elements of earlier forms of, of social organization. So this is the new normal that we're living with, where we have trade dominating the top of our upside-down food pyramid. Uh, most of the things that we need, we can only get by paying for it, and um, involves dealing with strangers. Uh, tribute and barter uh, remain in some ways. The biggest form of tribute, of course, is taxes. Um, barter, it, you know, it, it's, it's really marginalized in, in some ways and, and, and uh, you know, it happens, but it, uh, most of you would probably have trouble thinking up of good examples of, of barter in your daily lives. Um, mostly it's things like, I'll help you move and then you'll help me move, or exchange of favors on that level. And, and gift is really just residual and, and um, not, not, doesn't play that important a part. The, the most important thing is that most interactions are impersonal. They're based on purchase and sale within a market system. So that if, if you're the loser in the transaction, it's, it's your fault. It's nobody else's fault because it's, it's your choice to deal with people you don't trust, with strangers. And, and, if, and, it's, it's, and therefore it's your mistake. Nobody owes you anything. Um, if it's legal, in some sense, then there's really nothing you can fall back on and say, well, you weren't fair to me. Um, and tribute is really limited to taxes and uh, charitable donations and, and other impersonal status-seeking behaviors of the well-to-do. That is, if you have an access of capital from, from your monetary transactions, you can devote some of these to things that raise your status in some impersonal way, because you don't personally have a relationship with whoever benefits. And gifts remain as vestigial cultural forms reserved for ceremonial uses, such as the engagement ring. Um, most importantly, everyone is completely dependent on financialized, commercialized, impersonal systems. And when these systems fail, as they do repeatedly, there is nothing for anyone to fall back on. 
Now, it turns out that this upside-down 